How now, Captain Floyd? Coming from the bridge? I assure you there is a very excellent service is committed at the bridge. Is, is the Duke of Exeter safe? The Duke of Exeter is as magnanimous as Agamemnon, <laughs> and a man that I love with my heart and my, my soul and my duty and my life and my living and my honormost power. He is not, God be praised, any hurt in the world, but keeps the bridge most valiantly and with excellent discipline. There's an ancient lieutenant at the bridge. I think in my very conscience, he's as valiant a man as Mark Antony. He is a man of no estimation in the world. But I did see him do his gallant service. What do you call him? He's called Ancient Pistol. I know him not. <laughs> ah, well, here's the man. Captain, I do beseech you do me favors. The Duke of Exeter doth love thee well. All right, and I have merited some love at his hands. Bardolph, <laughs> a soldier, firm and sound of heart, and a buxom valor hath by Cruel fate and giddy fortunes, furious fickle wheel, that God is blind that stands upon the rolling rest. By your patience, ancient pistol. Fortune is painted with a muffler for her eye to signify to you that fortune is blind. And she has painted also with a wheel to signify to you, which is the moral of it, that she is turning and inconstant and mutability and variation. And her foot, look you, is fixed upon a spherical stone which rolls and rolls and rolls. In good truth, the poet paints an excellent description of it. Fortune is an excellent moral. Fortune is Bardolph's foe and frowns upon him. For he hath stolen a pax and hanged must he be. The damned death, let gallows gate for dog, let man go free. And let not hemp his windpipe suffocate. But Exeter hath given the doom of death for packs of little price. Therefore speak for his life, Captain, the Duke will hear thy voice. And let not Bardolph's vital thread be cut by edge of penny cord and vile reproach. Speak. Captain, and I will be requited. Ancient pistol, I do partly understand your meaning. Why, then rejoice, therefore. Certainly, ancient, it is not a thing to rejoice at. For look you, if he were my brother, I would desire the Duke to use his good pleasure and put him to execution. For discipline ought to be used. Die and be damned, and bigo for thy friendship. It is well. The big of Spain. Very good. Why, it is an errant counterfeit rascal. I remember him now. A board a cut purse. I assure you, he uttered his brave words at the bridge as you shall see in a summer's day. But it is very well. What he has spoke to me, that is well, I warrant you, when time is served. Tis a gull, a fool, and a rogue that now and then goes to the wars to grace himself at his return into London under the form of a soldier. <laughs> and such foes are perfect in the great commander's name. They will learn you by road where services were done at such and such a sconce, at such a breach, at such a convoy. Who came off bravely, who shot, who disgraced, upon what terms the enemy stood. And this they con perfectly in the phrase of war, which they trick up with new tundos. What a beard of the general's cut, or a horrid suit of the camp will do us. Foaming bottles of ale washed with is marvelous to be thought of. But you, you must learn to know such slanders of the age, lest you be marvelously mistook. I'll tell you what, Captain Gower. <laughs> I do perceive he is not the man who would gladly make show to the world he is. If I find a hole in his coat, I will tell him my mind. Hark you, the king is coming. I must speak with him from the bridge. God bless your majesty. How now, Flewellyn? Camest thou from the bridge? Aye, so please your majesty. The Duke of Exeter is very gallantly maintained the bridge. The French have gone off, look you, and there is gallant and most brave passages. The adversary was had possession of the bridge, but they are forced to retire, and the Duke of Exeter is now master of the bridge. I can tell your majesty the Duke is a very brave man. What men have you lost, Flewellyn? The perdition of the adversary hath been great. Reasonable great. Mary, for my part, I think the Duke hath lost never a man. Oh, but one that is to be executed for robbing a church. One Bardolph, if your majesty know the man. We would have all such offenders so cut off. Mm. And we give express charge that in our marches through the country there be nothing taken from the villages, nothing nothing stolen but mm. paid for. Mm. for None of the French upbraided or abused in disdainful language, for when lenity and cruelty play for a kingdom, the gentler gamester is the soonest one. You know me by my habit. Well, then I know thee. What shall I know of thee? My master's mind. Unfold it. Thus says my king. Say thou to Harry of England, though we seem dead, we did but sleep. Advantage is a better soldier than rashness. 
tell him we could have rebuked him at Harfleur, but we thought not good to bruise an injury till it were full right. Now we speak upon our cue, and our voice is imperial. England shall repent his folly, see his weakness, and admire our sufferings. Bid him, therefore, consider of his ransom, which must proportion the losses we have borne, the subjects we have lost, the disgrace we have digested, which, in wait to re-answer, his own pettiness would bow under. For our losses, his exchequer is too poor, for the effusion of our blood, the muster of his kingdom too faint a number. And for our disgrace, his own person kneeling at our feet, but a weak and worthless satisfaction. To this add defiance, and tell him for conclusion, he hath betrayed his followers, whose condemnation is pronounced. So for my king and master, so much my office. What is thy name? I know thy quality. Majoy. Turn thee, uh, thou dost thy office fairly. Turn thee back <laughs> and tell thy king. I do not seek him now, but could be willing to march on to Calais without impeachment. For to say the sooth, though, tis no wisdom to confess, confess so much to an enemy of craft and vantage. My people are with sickness much in people. My numbers lessen, and those few I have almost no better than so many Frenchmen. Who, <laughs> when they were in health, I tell thee truly, Harold, I did think that upon one pair of English legs did march three Frenchmen. <laughs> <laughs> God forgive me that I do thus brag. This your heir of France hath blown this vice in me. I must repent. But tell thy master, here I am. My ransom is this frail and worthless trunk. My army but a weak and sickly guard, yet God before. Tell him we will come on, though France himself and such another neighbor stand in our way. There's for thy labor, Montjoy. I bid thee, bid thy master well advise himself. If we may pass, we shall. But if we be hindered, we will your tawny ground with your red blood discolor. <laughs> Therefore, Go hence in peace. The sum of all our answer is but this. We do not seek a battle as we are. Nor as we are, we say we will not shun it. Here, here. So tell your master. I shall, thanks to your highness. I hope they will not come upon us now. We are in God's hands, brother, not in theirs. March to the bridge, it now draws toward night. Beyond the river, we'll encamp ourselves, and on tomorrow, bid them march away. Mm -hmm.